There are so many decisions that have to be made when designing a home, so it's not surprising that we often face a few hiccups along the way. From hanging generic artworks to having matchy-matchy furniture, here are the 5 biggest interior design mistakes that will cheapen the look of your home as well as tips and tricks on how to fix them. Mistake 1. Hanging generic artworks and quotes. I'm sure many of us have been to homes with hanging quotes like live, love, love, and keep calm, or mass-produced prints on the walls. I know it because I'm guilty of this in earlier stages of my life. This is one of the biggest interior design mistakes that immediately cheapens the look of the space. The reason is because these types of wall art pieces are generic, tacky, and don't really resonate with anyone. Instead, try to make your own art, display your own photos, or buy custom or at least unique artworks from sites such as Etsy, Society6, The Xenio, or Minted, which I'll link in the description box if you want to check them out. Wall art that expresses your individuality is much more powerful than those mass-produced prints from IKEA that you are likely to see in the next hotel reception or Airbnb you visit. Personalized artworks can provoke particular feelings, which makes a space more compelling in comparison to filler pieces that lack depth and meaning. Before I continue, I wanted to briefly thank today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Earlier this year, I took the class Starting a Successful Side Hustle by Ali Abdal, which is really helpful for anyone wanting to run a creative side hustle. In it, he goes through the process of identifying what projects to start, how to make time for it, and the key aspects of running a successful side project. You can also take classes on interior design, photography, typography, and many more. The best part about Skillshare is that it is curated specifically for learning. No ads, no distractions, and constant addition of new premium classes, so you can just follow wherever your creativity takes you. The first 1,000 people to use the link on my description box will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Mistake two, everything is too small. Decorating with rugs, artworks, and coffee tables that are too small for the room makes it feel empty and disjointed, which instantly cheapens the space. People often purchase rugs that are too small because they are scared to commit to large ones, mainly because they are so expensive. Catalogs also tend to use rugs that are smaller than what is appropriate for the room because photographers only have access to samples before full-size ones are manufactured. It makes people more inclined to buy the smaller size rug that is featured in the catalog rather than the full-size one for this space. The reason why you want a large rug is because it will ground the seating area and make for a cohesive space. Ideally, you want a rug that you can put all four legs of your lounge onto, or at least the two front legs if you have a smaller space. The same goes for artworks. If they are too small, your eyes will gravitate towards the large blank space around it, which cheapens the look of the space. The general rule is to aim for an artwork piece that is half to two-thirds of the width of the furniture it is going to be hung above. If you are unsure about sizing, something that is slightly bigger is always better if you have the budget for it. Similarly, coffee tables that are too small will make a room feel incoherent and empty. The general rule is that a coffee table that is at least half the horizontal length of the sofa and no more than two-thirds. This ensures that it's the right scale in relation to existing furniture. Mistake 3. Hanging your curtains wrong. Hanging curtains and curtain rods wrong can make windows look smaller, ceilings look lower, and also reduce the amount of light that enters into a room. Curtain rods are often mounted too low as a way to compensate for curtains that are too short. This is a mistake as you want to hang curtain rods high to create the illusion of high ceilings and large windows. The general rule is to put the rod approximately halfway to two-thirds from the top of the window frame to the ceiling. More specifically, if you have a standard 2.4 meter ceiling height, hang your curtains about 10 to 15 centimeters above the window frame. However, this obviously depends on the window height. Rods that are too narrow can also make a room feel smaller. Curtain rods are not wide enough if curtains sit in front of the window when drawn apart. The general rule is to get a curtain rods that are about 15 cm wider than the outer frame of the window. Curtains that are gathered in front of the wall with just the edges of the curtains overlapping the edges of the window when drawn apart is what you're aiming for. An exception can be made if you have a full length window or specific design elements that you want to highlight. Another mistake is having curtain panels that are not wide enough. The rule is to have a curtain panel that is 1.5 to 2 times the width of your windows so that your curtains have a gathered, luxurious appearance. For example, if you have a window that is 2 meters wide, 
you want a singular curtain panel that is between 3 and 4 meters wide, or two curtain panels that are between 1.5 and 2 meters wide each. The same goes for curtain length. Curtains that are too short look awkward and jarring. You want to have either a kiss, puddle, or float length curtains in your home. Kiss length hover right on the surface of the floor, which means it is the hardest to get right as it requires very accurate measurements. Puddle length is the most dramatic, as 2 to 10 cm of curtain goes beyond the floor. Puddle curtains have a feminine and old world feel that are usually used for thick grand curtains such as velvet. Unfortunately, they require the most cleaning as they often collect dust. Floating curtains don't touch the ground at all. They hang roughly 5 to 10 mm above the ground and no more than 15 mm. Otherwise, they look too short. They're a less formal option and also require the least cleaning. The length you go for depends on the look and function of the room. Generally, longer curtains create more formal appearance, while shorter curtains give a more casual vibe. Mistake 4. Having everything out on display. Everything that is on display in your home needs to be curated, otherwise the space will look cluttered and cramped. This is even the case in maximalist spaces where it may seem that everything is on display, but in reality, everything is intentionally styled in accordance with the color palette and design style. Usually, open storage spaces are the culprit of having everything out on display, whether that is in the kitchen, bathroom, or living room. In the living room, open shelving units and media consoles often become a place to store unattractive items like TV remotes, wires, and gaming controllers. These items should be put into closed shelving spaces to hide them to make the space look simple and clean. Similarly, open shelving in the kitchen is often overdone and looks cluttered. Only display feature pieces on shelving and hide your ugly kitchen items like those free corporate mugs in a cabinet. Another issue is displaying every kitchen appliance on countertops. Only put the essentials on countertops like your toaster, kettle, and coffee maker rather than having everything out on display. The same goes for the bedroom. If you find it difficult to maintain an open storage, go for storage units that have doors rather than open shelving as it looks tidier and more put together. You can also get underbed storage like IKEA rollout bins to store items like shoes. As for the bathroom, Personal hygiene products become cluttered very quickly. In the bathroom, you really want to have a vanity rather than a pedestal sink so you have drawers to store items in. Medicine cabinets are also great as you can hide stuff behind the mirror. If you're currently renovating, consider getting recessed medicine cabinets as a hidden storage solution or something that incorporates the overall design elements rather than a standard builder grade cabinet. Mistake 5. Making everything match. While continuity is an important design principle, going too far will make your space look matchy-matchy. This often happens when you buy a matching furniture set from a showroom, such as a sofa with two matching armchairs or a bed dresser nightstand combo. Instead, try to create contrast in the room by experimenting with different tones, textures, and silhouettes. For example, you may want to get two lightweight armchairs to balance out a heavier sofa. The same goes for color. Avoid using only one shade of the same color in a room. Instead, mix in different shades, tints, and tones of the same color to create some contrast. The rule of thumb is to complement furniture rather than match it. I hope that this video has helped you identify some of the most popular interior design mistakes that you might have in your home right now and will stop you from making similar ones in the future. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below and I'll try my best to answer them. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.